Thank you very much for having me. My name is Brad Smith. I work on our US institutional ETF team, supporting our international clients, helping them understand how to use our strategies and the benefits of um, using ETFs within a portfolio. So this past March, Invesco celebrated offering NASDAQ 100 exposure for 25 years. A little bit of background on Invesco and who we are. Invesco is a global ETF provider. We're the fourth largest ETF provider in the world with 600 billion in US dollar ETF assets. As I mentioned, we're a global leader in NASDAQ 100 exposure, now celebrating offering this exposure for 25 years. We have a total of 290 billion tracking the NASDAQ 100, and that represents 81% of the world's assets that are tracking NASDAQ 100. Now, one other benefit with Invesco, uh, with our broad ETF offering, is we are a leader in swap-based ETFs, and this can be a helpful tool for foreign investors who are looking to get US exposure and uh, without dividend withholding tax. So what is the NASDAQ 100? The NASDAQ 100 is the largest 100 non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. It's a modified market cap weighted index that is rebalanced quarterly, reconstituted annually, and it also includes some global companies because ADRs are considered. Now, maybe some examples of what is a NASDAQ 100 company. Some, some of the top holdings are Microsoft, Apple, you have Airbnb, T-Mobile, Google, Tesla, Meta, many large companies that you all probably recognize. Now, when we look over these past 25 years, we, what are the themes that emerge that make NASDAQ 100 as well known as it is? The first is innovation. The NASDAQ 100 over these 25 years has been known to offer exposure to some of the most disruptive companies in the US economy. <clears throat> these companies, which I'll show later, are very committed to high R&D spend, which has helped make them as disruptive as they are. And then they've been good at taking that R&D spend and converting it into patents that are valuable and further driving earnings. And so some of the companies, as I mentioned, household names in the NASDAQ 100 uh, are like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA. These have been in the NASDAQ 100 for over 20 years. Um, and part of the lure you might be asking is like, what has made it so innovative? So NASDAQ was the first electronic exchange in the US, so that was a breaking technology. And when, it, many, when many of these companies were first considering where should they list, they saw that technology is very forward thinking and wanted to associate with that type of technology. So that brought many of the like Facebooks of the world to NASDAQ. And now, when new companies are considering IPOing, they think, who do I want to be like when, when I grow up? And many of them find being like Meta or Google is something they aspire to. And so what we've seen in recent years is a lot of these new IPOs have chosen to go with NASDAQ over NYSE. The next trait of NASDAQ 100 is robust fundamentals. Um, and we'll go deeper later on, but these companies are profitable companies, high growing companies that offer high quality um, earnings, which has helped contribute to the performance. And so when we look at sales, earnings, and dividend growth rates, the NASDAQ 100 outpaces the S&P 500 and the Russell 1000 growth. And so this has all led to a track record over the past 25 years, a strong track record that has placed NASDAQ 100 as one of the, at the forefront of growth and innovation in the US economy. So let's take a look at how how the NASDAQ 100 has performed over these 25 years. So you can see over the 25 years, the NASDAQ 100 has outperformed the Russell 1000 growth and S&P 500 by roughly 2% per year. And you might be wondering, okay, was that all just one time period? Is it uh, yeah, time period dependent? But what we did is we looked at a rolling window. So we looked at three years, five years, and 10 years. And over those time periods, uh, the Russell one, sorry, the NASDAQ 100 outperformed the S&P 500 and Russell 1000 growth over 75% of the time. 
So it wasn't just a single time period that drove that whole 2%. It's over the entire 25 year time period, on average, we saw this outperformance. <clears throat> so now let's look at what's driving this under the hood. The big differentiator for these companies to be as disruptive as they are is a commitment to R&D spend. So we looked at how much do NASDAQ 100 companies spend on R&D versus companies in other indexes. We found the average NASDAQ 100 company has spent 18 billion on R&D. <clears throat> and then we compared that to the S&P 500. We found that the S&P 500 spend on R&D was about half that in NASDAQ 100. But a lot of the S&P 500's R&D spend was actually coming from NASDAQ 100 companies. So when we pull out those NASDAQ 100 companies, we were left with only $1 billion in R&D spend, a drastic difference from the 18 billion. So then how do these companies with all this R&D, how are they doing managing that R&D? To understand this, we looked at patents. How do NASDAQ 100 companies do with taking the patents, taking the R&D that they've developed and converting it into value. And so from 2007 to 2023, we saw NASDAQ 100 companies grew the value of their patents by 951%. And then to put that in reference, S&P 500 companies, they were about half that. But again, just the same as with the R&D, a lot of that S&P 500 uh, growth in patents was actually coming from NASDAQ 100 companies. So when we pull the NASDAQ 100 companies out, we were left with only one third of the growth of NASDAQ 100. So you might then be asking, okay, what the NASDAQ 100, it's outperformed, what's been driving that? Is it truly earnings? Or is it PE expansion? Are these companies just getting more and more expensive and that's what's driving the performance? So to understand this, I wanted to look at how is the relative PE of NASDAQ 100 companies performed versus S&P 500 companies? Now, to be expected, NASDAQ 100, it's targeting growth. So typically those companies are gonna have a higher um, PE ratio. So when I looked at the ratio, Back 10 years ago, it was about one and a quarter times more expensive, the NASDAQ 100 over S&P. But I, when I examine that ratio through time, it stays relatively consistent. So it ended the period at 1.3 uh, times with only 6% growth. But over that same time period, if we look at the relative performance of the NASDAQ 100 versus the S&P 500, we could see it outperformed 228%. So this outperformance, it's not coming from these companies getting more expensive, PE expansion, it's the denominator was growing. The earnings that these companies are generating are driving the outperformance of NASDAQ 100 versus the S&P 500. So let's now take another layer deeper and look at the fundamentals of these NASDAQ 100 companies. Uh, what I then looked at is, if we look at these fundamental metrics of revenue, earnings and dividends, how did those grow in the NASDAQ 100 versus the S&P 500 and Russell 1000 growth? And we can see that over that 10 year time period, the NASDAQ 100 significantly outgrew these other two benchmarks, S&P 500 and Russell 1000 growth. All three of the fundamental underlying metrics grew much higher. So we can see that NASDAQ 100 What's driving this outperformance is a commitment to R&D, a commitment, commitment to being a disruptor in the space, converting that into patents that are valuable, that can drive or they can protect their IP, and then they convert that IP into earnings, they have strong brand equity, uh, and economies of scale, which enables them to be competitive in the marketplace. So you might now be wondering, okay, we looked at what it's done over the past 25 years, but what is the NASDAQ 100 doing today and how is it being disruptive? What themes that we've heard talked about today, what, what exposure does NASDAQ 100 have to those? <clears throat> and when we look at it, we can see many uh, disruptive themes NASDAQ 100 is offering. Uh, one of the big categories is AI, big data, robotics, metaverse, 5G. And the one thing that I like about NASDAQ 100 
is you're not just going after a single theme. It's really hard to know, okay, what's the future? What's gonna drive the next big innovation, the next big disruption in the world? And it's hard to make that call ahead of time. But with this diversified approach of getting exposure to all these different themes, you know you have a well-rounded um, portfolio exposure uh, that can help you hopefully have exposure to the next big disruptive theme. And additionally, it's hard you know, to know, okay, what's, what's gonna be driving AI? What's gonna be, let's say, driving 5G? And then what company within that theme to pick? How do you know to pick NVIDIA or the T-Mobile of 5G? But with this, you're getting 101 companies that are invested in many of these very disruptive themes. And then one more way to look at disruption of what's the exposure in NASDAQ 100 and what are they doing today is patents. What are they spending their money in on R&D today? So what we, to get an idea of this, we looked at the current patent filings of the NASDAQ 100. What are they doing in 58 companies within the NASDAQ 100 or 83% of the index filed a, a patent in one of these disruptive technologies. So think of these almost as like sectors of disruptive technology. So all the light blue bars are all related to AI. So on the far left, you see like natural language processing. A lot of that is the underlying technology in things like Gen AI, ChatGPT. And you can see that companies in the NASDAQ 100 over the past year have filed 40% of all the patents uh, related to natural language processing. So these companies are at the forefront of innovation and um, coming up with the next disruptive technology. Um, recent developments, I mean, we all are, have heard of you know, chat, GPT, um, now you have Microsoft Copilot, all these new technologies coming out. This, the recent developments that we've seen in AI I think have placed us on the cusp of like a new realm of innovation. Um, and Bloomberg recently came out and projected by 2032, they estimate 12% of all technology spend is going to be on AI. And NVIDIA's CEO, he recently said um, that this year, in order to stay relevant, many industries that are just generic industries like industrials or machining industries, they're all gonna have to become technology industries in order to stay relevant and capitalize on this AI. So NASDAQ 100, all these companies, they've already been innovating, um, coming up with a new technology, the next wave that's gonna be powering this innovation. And um, they're poised to capitalize on this growth. With Gen AI, it's giving us ability that we didn't have before to optimize and expand our um, our efficiency on different processes that used to be really manual. Um, and so these companies, they're already invested in the space, they already understand the space, and so they are set up to capitalize on this um, new shift in our economy. So I hope you learned something new today on NASDAQ 100 and its legacy of innovation, robust fundamentals, and the strong performance and what has driven that over the past 25 years. And I hope when seeing a slide like this of what these companies are doing, it gets you excited for what might happen in the future. Um, thank you very much for your time, and Marcus, Ava, and I will be downstairs. We have a, a booth, so please stop by if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.